It's no secret that hyperbaric oxygen has an amazing regenerative quality. We know that it can speed healing times, speed recovering times, stimulate the repair and regeneration of tissues, improve our performance. But what are the mechanisms of action that are actually behind those incredible changes? Understanding that is exactly what we need to be able to do in order to design effective programs to help our patients get the results that we're trying to get using hyperbaric oxygen. And today we're gonna to cover exactly that. What are the mechanisms of action of hyperbaric oxygen with relation to the regenerative quality, the healing quality of hyperbaric oxygen? So even in traditional hyperbarics, we've been using hyperbaric oxygen therapy to stimulate the repair and healing of tissue for many, many decades. We use it for thermal burns. We use it for non-healing wounds. We know that when a person has been very, very severely damaged, hyperbaric oxygen seems to be one of the main tools that we can use that massively stimulates the repair and regeneration of tissues. So we've been doing that for 40 or 50 years very successfully in very severe and very traumatic cases. Now there's a ton of literature that we can pull from to understand how has hyperbaric been so effective at creating that response in our body? And once we understand those mechanisms, then we can start to have a meaningful conversation about how to apply those mechanisms to maybe less traumatic and less severe cases, whether that's also to heal and regenerate tissue that's been damaged through either trauma or surgery, or maybe it's just to recover from exercise bouts or to improve performance. Hyperbaric has the capacity to help all of these different people in all of these different cases. Let's talk more about how that is. So again, on the traditional side of hyperbarics, whether it's tissue damage from infection or it's tissue damage from trauma, crush injuries, burns, non-healing ulcerative wounds, hyperbaric stimulates specific pathways. So what are the mechanisms of action that are helping these very severe and traumatic cases heal and regenerate tissue? We know that hyperbaric oxygen stimulates a multitude of growth factors like VEGF, BDNF, platelet-derived growth factors. All of these growth factors stimulate healing and repair. And so we get responses like angiogenesis, new blood vessel growth, neurogenesis, the healing and the repair of neurons and synapses, or we get mitogenesis, which we talked a little bit about in the last video on mitochondrial function, which was the increase in size and density of mitochondria in response in order to upregulate cellular function and cellular ATP production. We know that hyperbaric oxygen stimulates fibroblast proliferation and collagen synthesis, literally the rebuilding and the remodeling of our soft tissues, tendons, ligaments, and cartilage. We know that hyperbaric oxygen stimulates stem cell mobilization to mobilize new cells to differentiate into an area to begin to heal and repair that tissue. We also know that hyperbaric stimulates reverse transcriptase, which is a polymerase in our DNA that is responsible for helping to either maintain, grow, and repair telomeres. So that's about seven different mechanisms of action that are all very specifically geared towards this regenerative quality of hyperbaric oxygen. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. Now, like most other uses of hyperbaric oxygen therapy, when we're dealing with these very severe crush injuries, these really deep thermal burns or these non-healing wounds, most certainly it's expected we're gonna to need to go to much higher pressures of oxygen in order to get the effect that we're trying to have. As we shift our focus from these on-label, FDA-approved, severe life and limb cases, and we move our attention over to how do we apply that same thought process to something maybe less severe or less traumatic, but still we're trying to improve recovery and healing, we can start to understand that same principle. Perhaps in some of these cases, we don't need to use as high of a pressure. Maybe perhaps we don't need to be as aggressive in our programming. We can start to understand that less serious and less severe cases can still respond very favorable to hyperbaric oxygen, and we can do it at a pace that more closely reflects what the need of that patient happens to be. 
What would be very similar between these on-label cases and off-label cases is ultimately we need new blood vessel growth. Wherever there's trauma and broken capillaries and broken blood vessels, we would still want to regrow capillary beds, heal the endothelial lining, and improve the circulation. Where there's multiple tissue damage, whether that's from exercise or trauma or surgery, we want those soft tissues, the skin, the muscles, the tendons, the ligaments, we need all of that to heal. And those growth factors will stimulate healing in these off-label cases as well. Wherever there's tissue damage, we need stem cells to mobilize into that area to repair the cell type or tissue type in that damaged area. So the mobilization of stem cells in these off-label cases makes sense as well. For this particular mechanism, it doesn't necessarily have to be that we're trying to heal from something that has happened that is problematic or traumatic in nature. It could simply be that the aging process itself is also very deteriorating. The aging process is breaking our bodies down and breaking our cells down year after year. We all know that. We talk about these terms catabolic versus anabolic. Catabolic in our body is a process of cells and tissues breaking down. Anabolic is our cells and tissues rebuilding. Hyperbaric is a very anabolic modality. And so as we learn how to apply hyperbarics, we can do specific programming, let's say even off-label for these traumatic or post-surgical tissue damage cases, but we could also just use it as a tool for improving our health. If aging is a degenerative catabolic process over time, then hyperbaric programming can be used to create an anabolic response over time. And so in one year or three years or five years, certainly you'll be older. However, can we improve your health year after year, making five years from now the healthiest you've ever been, 10 years from now being the healthiest you've ever been? Now, is hyperbaric gonna be the only modality or the only tool we should use in that? I'm sure not. And if you've been watching any of my other videos, you know that there's plenty of other tools that we recommend and use. But should oxygen be considered to be a foundational and fundamental component of that programming? Absolutely, yes. So as we're wrapping up this series of videos on hyperbaric oxygen mechanisms of action, and we're covering these regenerative qualities, what I really want you to understand is there will be cases of people that you see come through that do have very specific issues that do require more specific programming. And from a regenerative medicine standpoint, we can start programming hyperbaric oxygen to help those people heal from those traumas, from that tissue damage. And we can also help them to understand that the same way hyperbaric helped that tissue healing because of a very specific issue that they had, it can also help tissue healing as an ongoing process in their life to continually improve their health for years to come. Just like those mechanisms help rebuild tissue, those mechanisms help protect us. Constantly growing new blood vessels as we need them. Constantly improving the amount of cellular energy we're producing. Continually increasing the number of stem cells that we're mobilizing into these areas of repair and regeneration. And then repairing and regenerating our DNA and our telomeres as a way to help protect our cells for the long haul. One final thought that pertains to really this entire series, which is this. We get a lot of questions like, hey, is there any research to use hyperbaric oxygen for this specific condition? And in some cases, that answer is yes, there's plenty. And in other cases, there may be very little or maybe none. That's another reason why understanding these mechanisms is so important. Quite honestly, there's really never gonna be enough time or money or interest to do all the different research projects for all the different pressure ranges that we can use in hyperbaric for all the different conditions that hyperbaric may help people with. So if we can understand the mechanisms of action, then we can actually dig deeper into the layers of how is hyperbaric oxygen actually working? What are the goals? What are the health goals or health concerns of this person seeking our care? And is it appropriate to apply these mechanisms of action for these health concerns or for these health goals? And if it is, we should proceed. And if it isn't, we shouldn't. But we can't really make those decisions unless you fully understand the detail of all of these mechanisms of action. I hope that that helps shift your paradigm around how you plan to create protocols for the people looking for your care. And I hope this helps expand on your knowledge of how to apply hyperbaric oxygen for so many different issues or goals of patients coming to you looking for help. So if you haven't seen the rest of the videos in this series, please go back and check those out. These concepts really build from the beginning through this last thought. As always, I hope you found this information helpful and we'll see you on the next video. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist or a DO or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, 
which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.